1999, evolutionary psychologist uh, Bugoslav Parwalowski and Robin Dunbar, <laughs> thank you, uh, conducted a study of ads in which they uh, objectively assessed the market value for particular age and sex classes of individuals. Okay, here's the meat. Here's the salient part, okay? They did this by dividing the portion of female, male and female advertisers seeking individuals by of a given age, the demand, by the proportion of male and female advertisers of that age, the supply. As expected, they discovered that women that for women, market value peaks in their late 20s. For while for men, it peaks in their late 30s. According accordingly, ads posted by women and men in these ages category uh, these age categories were also or were those that received the most replies. They also found that women and men in a, with high market value were more demanding and choosy, looking for more specific traits in a potential partner. Okay, so that's number four. That's from the book. Okay. Does that sound to you like this? Oh my goodness, that crazy guy, Rola Tomasi, and his and his wacky uh sexual market value um scale his his graph oh my goodness Sa does that sound like right about where peak value coincides why yes it does yes it does there you go confirmation right there science confirms so that's number one now i'm going to move on here uh but if you want to check that out it's called games primates play it's pretty good uh now this is the actually the more this is the the, the trending one here okay so we have to look at this one uh, I'm I'm pulling this data. Actually, let me just put this on screen because it's easier to do it. Um, where do you go? And which one is that? Trends and frequencies. Here you go. This is a good one. Okay, this was a good one. I I pulled this for today's show, particularly for today's show, because I just show as I just showed you those sexless cohorts. Okay, trends in frequency of sexual activity and numbers of sexual partners amongst adults, age eighteen to forty-four. This is that that study, two thousand to two thousand eighteen. Nobody ever really digs into the meat of this, so I'm going to dig into the meat of it, and we've got to get to the results here. So let's look at the results because this is the part that I wanted to get to, and I'm going to I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. But if you want this, you can find it at uh, well, I'll I'll put the I'll put this in the description so you guys can go look this up if you want. Okay, so the absolute increase in sexual activity was more pronounced among men ages 18 to 24. In this age group, the proportions of those reporting weekly or more sexual activity and those reporting one sexual partner decreased. Among the ages 25 to 34, sexual inactivity doubled from 7% to 14%. And weekly or more sexual activity decreased from 65% to 50.3%. In men aged 35 to 44, sexual inactivity was largely unchanged during the study where periods were period, uh, the study period, whereas a sexual frequency of one to three times per month increased slightly and weekly or more sexual activity increased from 61% to 49%. Okay, got that. Now, here's the part where I wanted to get to. Among women, the distribution of sexual activity in the age, the total age range remained stable during the study period. Digest that for a moment, okay? When analyzed by age group, okay, that's the age group part, and then there was a trend towards an increase in the proportion of individuals reporting three or more partners, this is in the female side of things, which was driven by women aged 25 to 34 years old. So this is from that study. This is the part that they don't like all the, all these guys like, and these are guys that I like follow on Twitter. All the guys who like show you like, Oh, here's the links. Go, you have, have a look at it, have at it. They'll, they'll quote parts of it. They'll quote the parts that are like young men aren't, aren't getting laid. Young men don't know how to socialize. Young men don't know how to take the girl to the dance. Bullshit. No, it's because this generation has the has had the least amount of sex and has the least interest in sex than any other generation that came before it. Certainly my generation. Gen X, right? So, but it's never been easier, or I should say this, it's never been uh like for for women, anyways, uh, the incidence of sex, you know, having sex, whatever, has either stayed the same or it's gone up. For men, it's drastically sexlessness has drastically gone up. That is not hookup culture. 
that right there should tell you something about when we when we when women fall like this girl in the in the video in the TikTok video when she falls back on this stuff about oh you know society this and and culture that and in social constructionism this and blah 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 right no that's you being held accountable by your own actions and you're upset about it and right probably understandably so but it ain't hookup culture and it ain't and it ain't oh poor guys no it's the guys you're selecting. It's those ape, it's the apex fallacy. Once again, it's the guys like men are pigs. Yeah, the ones at the top that you wanted to hook up with and that you thought you could turn from a booty call into the guy who's gonna go home and meet your parents and kiss you in public and and be official with you on Instagram or, or Facebook or whatever. And then you get it's funny that that's the romantic ideal right now. <laughs> we're we're official on Facebook. Oh. Did you uh, dump or did you uh, unfollow or ghost or delete all of your old boyfriends? No, but we're official on Instagram. I remember, uh, and I, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, I think there was some, there was like a trend or a hashtag or something where it's like women would not make them would not make guys official unless they put a ring on their finger or unless there was like some sort of real investment. And even then they weren't like deleting their old boyfriend. They, they were still using them as like Instagram boyfriends. So the the advertising, the opportunism, the sexual opportunism for women doesn't stop. So if this girl who's complaining about hookup culture really feels bad and really wants to get with a good guy, then is she still on Instagram? Is she still on Tinder? Is she still using these things? Or is she trying to do it the old-fashioned way? 